Just before a lot of people break up for the holidays, Valve has pushed out a big update. SteamOS 3.4 for the Steam Deck is out now and it's a really big upgrade compared with the previous version. There's an absolute ton of changes to everything behind the scenes. To actually find the update, just press the Steam button and go into the system settings and hit check for updates and then it will show you SteamOS 3.4. After it downloads it, your Steam Deck will reboot to finish off the update and eventually it will boot back into gaming mode on SteamOS 3.4. Now a lot of the update I covered previously, but I'll go over the main changes again for you now so that you've got a fresh look. So on top of all the main Linux components behind SteamOS being updated, like the graphics drivers and more, there's also a big upgrade to the desktop mode that jumped multiple versions. So you end up getting everything new from Plasma 5.24, 5.25 and 5.26 and there's a lot of good stuff in there. This includes features like the new overview mode to get a full view of your desktop at a glance. To do this in the desktop mode system settings you can go into workspace behavior and screen edges. And then when you click on one of the screen edges, it actually gives you a list of different things you pick. An overview mode is at the bottom. This overview mode gives you easy access to see all of your open windows across multiple desktops. And you can switch between these multiple desktops. You can drag windows between them. And it also has a powerful search built in that lets you search through apps, documents, and a whole lot more. It's really quite useful. There's a lot more customization included now with plenty of color options in the settings where you can change the accents for various parts of the user interface. So you can switch between different colors and truly make it your own. And you'll see me changing it and then in the file manager it will be shown up straight away. Another addition and one I'm not quite sure why you'd even want to do it is to make your panels float. So the KDE panel at the bottom you can make it float in the edit menu. And when you maximize windows that you've got open like the file manager, it will then maximize the panel. And when you turn it back to a window, the panel will float again. Again, I don't know why you'd want it, but it's kind of cool. The biggest one though for the desktop mode is the discover redesign. The app pages are actually a lot clearer now with all the main information under the screenshots at the top. Discover is a lot more stable now as well. It will crash less. The support of flat packs is much better and so for Steam Deck that just results in a better overall experience installing apps in the desktop mode. The Discover UI is also now responsive so it will hide things when the window is smaller which is again really useful. There's a lot more to it with the majority being bug fixes that they've noted and amusingly Valve tagged it as a small update. If this is their idea of small, I want to see what their idea of big is. Issues being solved like a number of titles actually breaking when you put the Steam Deck to sleep. There was a performance issue that could cause 100 millisecond hitches during gameplay if you had the adaptive backlight enabled. One that I came across was the graphics driver crash when interacting with the map in Death Stranding Director's Cut. They fixed the GPU clock settings sometimes not sticking if set manually. Another big one is that they fixed an issue with the fan controller excessively sensor polling which caused sporadic fan behavior and higher SSD temps on some NVMe drives. There's new firmware for the docking station as well which fixes an issue where HDMI 2 displays are not detected during wake or boot. In the performance menu, there's a couple of new options there as well. The first one is to allow tearing. So at the cost of sometimes displaying partial frames, it allows for lower average latency when VSync is disabled and the frame limiter is off. And another one a lot of people have been asking about is the performance HUD. When set to level two, it will now use a horizontal layout. So it will show along the top of the screen. So for games running in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it actually fits in properly. Another big one for storage is that they've re-enabled trim for the internal drive as well as supported external devices, which should overall help to improve the right performance. And they say it includes a workaround to ensure that trim operations are safe for SD cards 
that advertise discard support but do not support it. Steam will do this trim itself as needed. And there's a new button in Systems, Settings, Advanced to run trim immediately. There's also now an eject option for removable drives in Settings Storage. It unmounts the removable drive, but obviously it does not physically eject it. External drives formatted as EXT4 are now automatically mounted and available for use in Steam. That's bringing down another barrier. The rest of it are just miscellaneous fixes. Apart from one that I particularly enjoyed here is that they've added support for the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Wireless Controller dongle. Now I actually own one of these and I picked it up during SteamOS 3.4 preview to give it a test and yep, it works out of the box. And it's actually a really comfortable controller. All that and more can be found in the fold change log. As always, an easy to find link will be in the description. Do let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you next time.